But I could comment more about borderline personality disorder. I think I have enough mental energy to do that tonight. So, technically speaking, it's often considered the female variant of antisocial personality disorder. So it's 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 classified or it's classified in, in, in the domain of externalizing disorders, acting out disorders. And I think what happens, we don't understand borderline personality disorder very well. And it's characterized by tremendous impulsivity, um, radical confusion of identity, um, and then this pattern of idealization of, of people with whom the person afflicted with the disorder is associated with radical idealization of those people and then radical devaluation of them. And then there's another theme that sort of weaves along with it, which is the proclivity of people with borderline personality disorder to presume that they will be abandoned and then to act in a manner that makes such abandonment virtually certain. And so it's a very complicated disorder, but that, I think, gets at the crux of it. One of the things that's interesting about people with borderline personality disorder, in my experience, is that they're often quite intelligent. And you, you see in the person with borderline personality disorder something like the, the waste or the squandering of tremendous potential. They, they seem capable of thinking through the nature of their problems and analyzing them and discussing it, but not capable whatsoever of implementing any solutions. And technically, there's no relationship between I IQ and conscientiousness. It's very weird. Because if you read the neuropsychological literature, and you read about the functions of the prefrontal cortex, they're usually conceptualized in intellectual terms. And they're associated with planning and strategizing and so forth. And that's what conscientiousness is, is planning and strategizing and implementation. But the correlation between IQ and conscientiousness is zero. And so is the correlation between working memory and conscientiousness. Zero. And zero is a very low correlation, right? I mean, really, it's hard to find things in psychology that are correlated at zero. Things tend to be correlated to some degree. They tend to be interrelated. The borderline seems to be able to strategize and to abstract, but not to be able to implement. And, and so this, the intellect per se seems to be functional, but it's not embodied in action. It's very, so it can be frustrating to be associated with someone who has borderline personality disorder because they can tell you what the problem is and even tell you what the solution might be, but there's no implementation. So maybe something went wrong developmentally. We don't know exactly how these sorts of things come about. The other thing that seems to be characteristic of borderline people with borderline personality disorder is that they, they remind me very much of people who are two years old and in some manner. Like, people with borderline personality disorder can have temper tantrums. In fact, they often do. And, you know, now and then you see a temper tantrum and they're usually thrown by two-year-olds, right? Most people grow out of temper tantrums by the time they're about three. They're very rare at four, which is a good thing, because if they're still there at four, that is not a good diagnostic predictor. That's a, that's actually a good diagnostic predictor, but it's not the kind that you want. And, you know, it's funny the way that we respond to two-year-old temper tantrums, because the two-year-old will throw themselves on the ground and beat their hands and their legs on the floor and scream and yell and turn red or even blue. I, I saw a child once who was capable of holding his breath during a temper tantrum until he turned blue which was really an impressive feat. You should try that, right? It's really hard. You really have to work at it. And you see that in adult borderlines. They'll have temper tantrums. And the funny thing is, when a two-year-old does it, it's like it's, you know, it's a little off-putting. But when an adult does it, it's completely bloody terrifying. And it, it happens very frequently with borderlines. And so I would also say to some degree, they didn't get properly socialized between that critical period of development between two and four. And you see the same thing with adult males who grow up to be antisocial. Because a large proportion of adult males who grow up to be antisocial are aggressive 
as children, as two-year-olds. So there's a small proportion of two-year-olds who are quite aggressive. They'll kick and hit and bite and steal if you put them with other two-year-olds. It's about 5% of the, of the males, smaller fraction of the females. But most of them are socialized by the time they're four. But there's a small percentage who aren't, and they tend to stay antisocial, and they tend to turn into long-term offenders. And, and, it, and the, devel the critical period for socialization development seems to be between two and four. And it seems to be mediated by pretend play and rough and tumble play and those sorts of mechanisms. And if it isn't instantiated by the age of four, it doesn't happen. And it doesn't look like it's addressable. Now, there are dialectic behavioral therapies that have been developed for people with borderline personality disorder. And they're purported to be successful.